Well guys, another day, another day that we actually get to talk about a tablet finally. We get to talk about another iPad today, and that specific iPad is the iPad mini, the first generation one. What's really cool about this one is that this design, yes, it's aged, like yes, the iPad Pros look better and everything, but just last year, we saw the iPad mini 5 come out, and that actually has the same exact type of design as this thing. So Apple really hasn't really pushed the boundary since then for their mini lineup. Hopefully they do. I did a lot of renders and things of what the newer iPad mini 5 at the time could have looked like, but obviously they didn't go that route. But this tablet actually came out in 2012, and this year it'll actually be turning 8 years old. I was about to say 7. It's going to be turning 8 years old, which is so crazy to think. I mean, I remember when this thing was released and Apple actually pushed out that little you know, commercial of some guy playing piano on their iPad mini, and I was like, man, that is legit. I want to get one. I don't even know how to play piano, but I just saw that. I'm like, dude, this thing is impossible. And this was the first kind of time we saw a little change in their whole entire way the iPads looked. It had slimmer bezels on the left and right, and of course this design has been transferred over to pretty much every newer iPad, even the bigger ones. We saw this kind of same type of design with the iPad Pros, the 10.5 inch, and I believe the 10, uh, 9.7 inch at some point, I don't really remember. But regardless, this iPad is really, really cool in terms of design. We have a 7.9 inch IPS panel at the front. The resolution is 768 by 1024, so it's actually a little bit above HD, which is cool. But this panel, right now, it just does not look that good in 2020. There's a little bit of an air gap between the glass and the actual digitizer, which, you know, it makes this panel look so much worse than it needs to be. And Apple actually put the same type of display on another iPad. I don't remember which one it was. Maybe it was the Mini 5, I don't recall. Or maybe it was the cheaper iPad, the 9.7 inch, the standard iPad. It was probably that one. And this panel, I mean, that in and of itself made this panel go from maybe like a 10 out of 10 to like a 7 out of 10 really fast. But the panel wasn't a 10 out of 10 to begin with. But it's a good size. And I do like how the display, you know, is still technically a retina display at the end of the day. We have a front-facing camera up top, a home button on the bottom, a lightning port, as well as a headphone jack on the iPad. On the back, we have a single camera setup. And in terms of the overall way it feels in the hand, it doesn't feel like a cheap device, which I, you know, I really, really like that. When this thing came out, it was technically cheaper than the, you know, the top-end iPads at the time. And it was pretty much not only a smaller version of those iPads, but it was also a cheaper version of those iPads as well. And since then, we've seen the iPads, the standard ones, and those were even cheaper than this one. So really, I think this is more so of a size thing than the price thing. People do like that smaller size. And, and this was the first iPad mini that we got. And in terms of design, I think it still holds up because the same type of design is being sold still in the Apple Store. So it is what it is. But in terms of the outside, that really really pretty much covers it. Now we have a little bit of a software kind of funny thing going on with it. So this thing started off with iOS 6. We were able to upgrade it to iOS 9.3.5, which is actually, you know, it's definitely an older software. We're on iOS 13, about to be on iOS 14 in a couple months. And it's not like a bad stopping point though. That's the funny thing with iOS 10 and iOS 9. Those both were pretty stable for specific devices. This device, obviously it didn't have the latest chipset at the time. And I think this thing had the same chipset as probably the iPhone 4S at the time which was the A5 chip, which is kind of weird because I feel like the iPad mini first gen handled iOS 9.3.5 better than the iPhone 4S. But what I will tell you is, is that in terms of the software, it's actually not that bad of a software experience on it. You know, I feel like iOS 9.3.5 still kind of holds up. It's just, obviously it's glitchy, it's laggy. There's a lot of things you can't do on iOS 9 that you can do with iOS 13. So there's no point in spending 50 minutes talking about it. What I will say though, is that with this specific version of iOS, you are able to jailbreak this iPad, which adds so like a plethora of so many different functionality to an iPad, including one that's this age. And this thing probably costs you like 50, 40 bucks. If you want to go pick it up, it's not going to cost you that much, but the jailbreaks that are that are available for this thing are super cool and you can install all those tweaks. I think every single tweak that ever came out is probably compatible with iOS 9 unlike the iOS 13 jailbreak. So you have all those little capabilities and if you're planning on getting this device, I would 100,000% recommend you to at least jailbreak this device. Do not buy it and then, you know, just plan on keeping it stock. There's no point in even buying it to be honest. I think I just spoiled the whole video. But if you are going to get it for some reason, obviously jailbreak it. You're going to have much more functionality coming out of that that way. So that pretty much covers it up in terms of the software side. There's really not too much going on with it. It hasn't gotten an update. I actually don't know if it got that iOS 9.3.6 update that the 4S got. It might have gotten it. It might have not. I'm 
I'm not really too sure, but it is what it is. So moving on to the performance side of things, this thing came with the Apple A5 chip, like I stated, a dual core CPU, and there were a couple different models of the iPad mini one. There was a 16, 32, and 64 gigabyte model, and all of those models had a whopping half a gigabyte of RAM. That is right, 512 megabytes, a whopping 512 megabytes, which if you think about it nowadays, I mean, even our cameras have more RAM than that, dude. Even our toasters have more RAM than that. I think I made that joke already. Even our brooms, I don't know, like, it's not really funny, but like, I just had to come up with something. Anything you look at nowadays has more RAM than this specific iPad. And at the time, like I said, this was pretty much like an iPhone 4S, but in an embodiment of an iPad with a dual core processor. And I think in terms of performance, there's no way of saying that it's still a good performing device. There's still, you know, it's, I will say it's kind of funny because when you're swiping through the screens and you're kind of going through it that way, it's actually not that bad of an experience. I was expecting it to be a lot slower than when it was, but I will definitely tell you in terms of the performance, it's really not good. It's not going to hold up for today's standards. If your use case and if you use a device, if your use for a phone or a device is super, super low, if you don't need like 20,000 things open in the background and you're not swiping from one app to the other and you need, you know, really intensive apps to begin with, like something like Microsoft Word for an iPad, that would be kind of graphically intensive. Something like Google Docs, that would be considered to me kind of graphically intensive because there's a lot of processes going on in the background. So even though it's not a game, something like this will not really do you that well if you're planning on being a student and you're kind of typing notes on it and something like that. Now, there's no Apple Pencil support for this thing either. So even that in and of itself, I probably want to recommend students buying this. But even if you're not a student, even if you want something as a media consumption device, this thing really won't do you that well in the long run. You're better off getting an iPad mini 2 and even that one's not even that good. So the iPad mini 1 in terms of performance really I would not recommend people getting it in terms of that. If you need something just to sake of having something that looks kind of cool, I will definitely I will definitely tell you to get it. If it's your only device, obviously use it. But I would not purposely go out and buy this device because of the performance. And the performance is definitely a con in my book. So I hate to say it. I you know I don't want to take away what this iPad brought, but it is the truth, and the truth hurts sometimes. So that kind of covers it up in terms of the performance side of things. Now hitting on the camera, surprisingly, this thing had two cameras on it. You know, obviously not two cameras on the back. It had a single five megapixel camera on the back and a front facing 1.2 megapixel camera. And with that front camera, you can shoot 720p videos. You're able to do FaceTime on this thing, which is really cool. Now we just kind of assume that all iPads and phones have FaceTime because that's a standard feature. But at that time, that was definitely one of the cooler things added. This might have been one of the first iPads to bring both a front facing and back facing camera. I think I'm totally wrong though because the iPad 2 brought that, but I don't really remember. The back facing camera is five megapixels, like I stated, and you're able to do 1080p videos on it, which is a really cool thing. Anytime we get to see even a phone from this caliber in this day and age shoot 1080p is really, really cool because it's funny because all my videos are shot in 1080p at 30 frames per second. I might go up to 60 frames or 4K. I don't really want to do that because it's more you know, megabytes on my SD card, but this camera is not really that good. I just don't think it gets the job done in today's standards. There's not even a lot of camera features in this iPad and you're lacking in the camera lenses. So obviously if you have this, thing i would only use the front facing camera for facetime calls that's the only thing i would do with it other than that i would not recommend people you know buying this because of the camera it's just an extra bonus that the thing has it this would not be my first choice of using a camera on an ipad so i think that covers it up in terms of the camera department now ending it off with the battery life this is probably one of its greatest you know pros definitely for this specific ipad at a 4490 milliamp hour battery and what's really cool about that is that it's not even that small of a battery size but on top of that it's not even that heavy of a performance of an iPad. It does not suck up that much power. The screen is now 1440p. It's not a crazy high brightness OLED display. It's nothing like that. It's just a standard HD panel. And because of that, standby time is great, but also usability is great. When you're using this thing, it doesn't take, you know, you know, 50% battery just to use it for one day. It definitely holds its battery for a prolonged period of time. But what I will tell you is, is that if you're getting this thing used, the battery life and the battery size has definitely degraded. It's probably not at the full 4,500, whatever it was. It's probably at like 3,500 or probably even less than that iPads and Apple devices in general tend to keep their battery health pretty decent, but it totally depends on the people who are taking care of the device to begin with. So I'll probably tell you if you're getting an iPad mini, the battery life could be hit or miss, but if it's on stock, if it's that full 4,500, then it's actually pretty good overall. So to kind of sum up the video and to answer the question, is the iPad mini still worth it in 2020, the iPad mini one? I will probably tell you no. For a lot of you out there, I would not recommend you purposely going out and buying an iPad mini depending on, even depending on whatever price. I don't care if you get it for like ten dollars 
okay, at $10, I would probably buy it, but I would not use it. I don't really feel comfortable using a device that's this old. You're probably better off getting an iPad mini 2. That one actually got a couple more versions of software on top of this, even, and it's a little bit faster overall. The iPad mini 4 would probably be the base model I would go for the cheapest iPad mini. But if you're currently using the iPad mini for any reason, then obviously you can keep it. Who am I to tell you not to use it or anything, but there's better options out there. Even like an iPad pro 2016, which is the one I use basically as an alarm clock, but it's the one I use. And that one I got for like a hundred bucks, 150, I don't remember. And that one is actually a very, very good device. You can get like the base iPads nowadays, at least the 2017 models for super cheap on eBay as well, and there's just really no point in buying this thing. Like I said, the lowest I would go is an iPad mini 4. It brought a lot to the table at the time, but I don't really think it's worth it now in 2020, so that pretty much covers it. If you guys have any other questions or anything, leave it down in the comment section as well. Hit that like button, that would mean so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. Every single subscriber that we get really does count, so it would mean so much if you guys could hit that. Also check out the other links down in the description as well. My Twitter, my Instagram, my second channel, all those links are linked down below. I'd really appreciate it if you guys could check it out but more importantly than everything else i love every single one of you guys hopefully i'll catch you guys in the next video peace out till then